Summer's a unique athlete. She is going to be the face of Canada's Paris Olympics. The Paris Grand Slam, the next step after the semifinals will be a gold medal rather than a fifth place. I just want to reach my potential, and if my potential is the world record, then I'm going to be thrilled. Right now, what I visualize is winning Pana. I, I'm going to focus on winning Pana. She's a fighter. She's, she's willing to put herself out there, and she thrives in chaos. There's some, been some times where she's been in a, a dark spot and had a, a little bit of trouble to, to come out. That will be a failed dive. My talents are just kind of either unappreciated or unrealized. Definitely want to take that next step. This could be my next move, you know, after my career is over. So I kind of just want to go out there and just, you know, share my story. Yeah, the first one, I'm like, give her space. <laughs> I was like, don't you, don't go near her. She's, yeah, she's gonna bad. need to get used to this. So, okay. good job. Yeah, I think How was good. that? I think the last 12 was good. The other, I don't know, I think it takes me a while to first ride outside. I was a bit like, but the last one I was going How did you feel like, with the positioning? Better. Yeah, you yeah. looked you looked a lot more comfortable. Yeah. So yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Solid on there. Great. Nice. Okay. okay. Parce que j'arrive à faire des nouveaux jeux toujours comme un peu. Je sais pas. Il tente, mais dans la fin ça allait vraiment bien. Pendant que je ride, je pense souvent je pense juste à je pense à mon mon wattage, puis à mes efforts. Et, mais c'est sûr que je prends le temps d'admirer les les vues lorsque je lorsque je peux. Oui, je suis je suis souvent je suis en mode performance. On a une, une job à faire et we get the job done. Yeah, I mean it's not it's not terribly long. I mean, it, put it, look at it this way: we swim further than we're gonna walk for a swim practice. So they've probably been sitting in the room talking about it and building up to way more well, than so what it really is. Well, so have we. I mean, at the end of the day, what are we talking? A five-mile hike? Like, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's got like fifty, seventy bucks to sprint it up to the top. How much did I bet you? Seventy bucks. Do more than that. To what? To what? sprint. Up to the top. <laughs> well, it's not stairs. It's I mean, there are some stairs, but so how is it? Just like incline? Uh, there, there's parts of it that are stairs. The down is less stairs yeah. and more like uh, a trail. But. Like a third of it is up, and then two thirds of it is down. Don't stress about it. Yeah, We're not yeah. gonna be on, on the way head. down. On the way so down. How there's, steep there's is it? No is it like this? You, you can see it through the window. Down. Yeah, it's like a lot of stairs up, and then it's like three mile hike like, down. Apparently, it's like what two hours to an hour. Uh, it said it's about two hours to do the whole thing. AKA yeah, like. That's that's We are, right now, we are at Sweat and Shop. Uh, we're gonna go train with my personal trainer, Nick, who is over there. <laughs> uh, What's up? I'm gonna be heading to Pan Am tonight. I'm feeling all right. <laughs> to be honest, like, I feel like I'm getting a little tickle of a sore throat again, and I'm like, kind of paranoid that I'm gonna have COVID. It might be TMI, but like I'm also going on my period like for the competition. And for me, if I'm on my period for a competition, I can't take caffeine. I can't, like I'm already weaker, but I can't take caffeine because I go into anxiety mode. I feel anxiety throughout my body. And it's like, I can't like get out of it. Period plus the COVID, it's like mentally, I'm trying to be like, oh, these things are not gonna matter. Just ignore it, just ignore it. But I'm also like, yeah, I'm like trying to stay positive, calm, confident. <laughs> Tiff 
definitely trains and has the physical capacity of a pro athlete. Of course, breaking is uh, at its core an art form, but if we approach it from a physical standpoint and just look at the physical and physiological aspects and demands, they are the same as a professional athlete. I used to get injured all the time because I basically was like, relied completely on my momentum and my like body coordination to do a lot of the moves that I do, but I didn't necessarily have the strength to do it, so it would lead to injury. I was worried about my shoulder for Pan Am, and so then Nick was like, let's just get your shoulder back to the strength that it was. So we do a lot of like strength training to make sure my shoulder is not gonna get injured and can support all the stuff that I do, because I do a lot of shoulder intensive stuff. Like I do a lot of overhead stuff. Pan Am is huge for TIFF and for our other dancers attending. It's a qualifier for the Olympics, so the winner will uh, receive a pass to go to the Olympics in Paris. Dancing is something that's close to my heart because I'm also a breaker. I know the stress of competition and breaking. Um, so yeah, I feel for them when, when, when they're battling and I just have to sit there with my, with my fingers crossed and hope the work we did was good. Non, mais là, au bout, on va avoir une chaise de camping. Que, bah, t'as plus à Montréal. <rire> Euh, ben en fait, c'est vraiment drôle parce qu'aux Olympiques à Tokyo, moi puis Wyatt, on a commencé à parler vraiment beaucoup. Puis là, à cause de lui, j'ai commencé à parler avec Tamara. Puis j'avais un peu peur de elle parce qu'elle est, un... <rire> est, elle est vraiment plus grande. Puis elle a une grosse caractère. I can't control the cheese. You missed the whole thing. <rire> I can't. I can't control. We're done, Wyatt. <rire> Mon mari, c'est Wyatt Sanford. C'est un boxeur pour euh, Canada. À Tokyo en 2021, on a commencé à se parler un peu, puis quand on est revenu à Montréal, on, on était un peu inséparables, on faisait. I was like, I knew from the first time we actually sat down and talked, I'm like, I knew something was gonna happen. It's really hot. Not yet. Not yet. Oh, is it hot? <laughs> How's your tongue? Look at his face already. <laughs> okay. Wyatt m'a jamais regardé plonger. Avant les Jeux de Tokyo, il n'avait pas regardé mes prélims. Puis là, il a décidé de se réveiller à 3 heures du matin pour regarder ma demi-finale. He was um, one of the first people that I talked to after it happened. I don't like to talk about a lot of things. I like to keep it all in. And, but he, he kind of pulls it out of me and, and helps me get it out so that I don't like dwell on it too much. Au moins, je sais qu'il peut accepter tous mes bas et pas non seulement mes hauts. <laughs> Welcome to Pilatari. You're going to do some wine tastings and uh, go on a trolley tour and hang out. You don't like wine though, right? No. <laughs> Today we are at uh, Pilatari Estate. It's our wine club's annual harvest party and trolley tour. Today for a special occasion we have Andre de Grasse here with us and he's sampling his wine that we make with him in the vineyards. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm in like heavy train all the time, but you know, of course, when you come home on the holidays, you get a chance to like, you know, call up the buddies, you know, have some fun. And of course, you know, of course, you know, I'm always with my kids, but no, no babysitter today, so they had to come out. <laughs> it's exciting to see how far he has come and where he has come from. You know, and I get to share. With this with my friends and them that has known him for like from since he was a little boy growing up. It's really, really special. He's one of the personalities. It's, I don't know, it's just different. <laughs> just taking pictures, it's like it's Andre. <laughs> Q-U-I-N-N. -N. Two uh, two N's. Yeah. Thanks, man. Alright. And then one to Beckett. <laughs> Oh, you got another. Oh, wow. Nice, nice. Because we got a lot of nieces yeah. and nephews. <laughs> so two Alex, right? Yeah. Oh, 
Oh. This is one of our biggest wine club members. Oh, wow. He loves nice. everything. Nice to meet you. I love you guys. Yeah. You are awesome. Thank you. Thank I'm you. just going to tell you. <laughs> and I'm just saying that because I'm here right beside you. Yeah. You're awesome. You're awesome. I think I just have a lot of trouble talking about how I perform or how I do trainings or that kind of thing and I think it's really difficult to do that. I try to just answer the question and talk about Paris and talk about things that are fun. Sometimes they ask like, what's your hidden talent? Or like we've talked about like, what's my hobbies? And I'm like, coffee is my hobby. <laughs> Gosh, sometimes my mind goes blank. Well, it's always the questions that like, who inspires you? And my mind can't name a single person in my life. Like, not one. So what we all want to be doing right now is lying on the floor, <laughs> taking a nap. Okay. <laughs> Do the little loop thing? Okay. Thank you. We've been, this year is the first year we've actually done interviews in French. Okay. <laughs> Moi, c'est Ophélia, enchantée. Enchantée. C'est la salle Radio-Canada Sport, réseaux sociaux. On mm -hmm. me dit que tu parlais français. Oui, un peu, oui mais euh, on a besoin de parler un peu lentement et c'est pas, pas parfait. C'est pas, pas parfait. Tu veux déposer tes choses? Oui. Ouais, juste là. You guys are right there. And that should be a pleasure. Hey there. I'm, I'm Jen. I'm Tess. Nice to meet you. We actually talked on the phone back in December. I don't yes, know if you remember. Do so remember. before Corey came to shoot with you, I did yes, the interview. Yes, I do remember. So of course I do. Nice to meet you nice in person. person. Uh, yeah. Okay. So if you could just say your name, where you're from, and your sport. Um, my name's Tess Wetliff. I'm originally from Caledon, Ontario, but I live in Montreal now, and I'm in Paris swimming. Great. Thank you. Well, let's talk about the injury. Um, so how does the back injury affect you to this day? Two months before Tokyo, uh, an 80 pound bar fell on my back while I was doing gym training. It broke my L1, which broke it directly in half, honestly. And so I had to go to the hospital and get bars and rods and some fun little surgeries to get that back together. I was in denial. I was on the floor in absurd amount of pain. It had been four years. It had been eight years from Rio, like from when I started to train for Rio. And all of a sudden, it just came to an abrupt halt. The bar fell on my back and it was done. How's your back, by the way? Oh, it's How's recovery been? Hard, obviously, like I think uh, the first year. Was... I had talked about Tokyo being, being my games. And so I didn't, I don't think I broke my back and then got more determined. I think I was so ready. I was in the best shape of my life. And I, again, I didn't get to finish the quad. I didn't have an ending. But there's still some days in training where I'm like, hey, like my back's not letting me do that today. And it's, I have trained for, like, I, I'm, I'm in shape. I'm doing everything I can. I'm doing my Pilates. Like, I'm doing what I can to, like, be in the best shape possible. Running out of time is my, is what scares me most about my back because we had three years and one of them was getting back to where we are. And that's, terrifying when you're trying to kind of put on the best performance of your life. Toyota Make or Break on CBC is presented by Toyota. Three, two, one, go! Excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah, I was insane. I can't walk this slow. Because we're at 500. This is actually so chill. Halfway, right? The quarter. Oh. Yeah, this is easy. For now. What the fuck? <laughs> nah, guys, can we take a break? I wouldn't sit down. Personally. We're low key smoking in the second group. Well, guys, look how far we've come. We're killing this. 
I think it's getting steeper now. Here. It'll cramp more if you don't if you keep don't move. Try to like shake it out or something. I feel like every like 400 steps, there it gets thinner. Let's go. <laughs> He's resting. <laughs> He's the one that said this was chill. This is not chill. At all. <laughs> Bro's contemplating his life right now. <laughs> and so am I. Actually? Yeah, bro, of course. You know how annoying I am as a roommate, bro? Actually? Bro, she doesn't want each other? Yeah. Satisfied? <laughs> no, no, because we, we finished putting the carpet down and stuff, so. It's like, I've been watching Survivor a lot lately. You know, you end up trying to survive as a team when you're out there internationally, when you're training, when you're hooping, when you're competing. You guys are the one tribe together against everybody else trying to survive. Hanging out with these guys is cool and all, but it's like a separate entity because, like, We've actually been through some real shit and like overcome it. It's funny, these both guys are both going to Europe after this, after this summer. It's Getting like new contracts. Look at these two guys, like professional players. Yeah, so you could say so basketball. Like these guys next time. Basketball, this year. basketball's giving us a career. When I first got hurt, I felt useless. I felt like I couldn't even like, you know, give myself my, a, a bath, right? So it's just like you just learn like there's things you can. There's like more to it than just being hurt, and that everything's open. So like you can. You know, you don't have to limit yourself. Like, it's all mindset, so. This one teammate of mine, Jamie, we both have essentially the same disability. And she made, uh, she made fun of me because I didn't want to go over to my ex's house because it had way too many stairs. And she's like, look at your arms. All you have to do is stay angled back, dude. She can hold you angled back and you just pull. Boom, open up my whole world. All of a sudden, places with stairs didn't become so anxiety filling, you know, because it's like, so oh, I see this guy at all the upstairs strip clubs all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, he's joking. <laughs> For you guys, like the people who took care of you after being injured, like they teach you that you should get babied and how to get babied and this is how you need to like yeah, take care of yourself and all that. And stuff like that. Yeah, right? exactly, so, right? Just like, like, like you just said, like an entourage and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. But like once you get into this community and you realize yeah, that like not everyone's like that and stuff like that. You just, uh, I think we just come from different situations and different, um, like they were injured, they had their ability. I'd never had the ability other than what I was given. During recess and during like all this gym class stuff, like you can't really be involved like you would want like, to be. Like join like with other kids or some shit? And like you do as much as you can, but like you're not gonna sit there and play soccer. Even if you're like a goalie in a wheelchair, they're gonna shoot a button, <laughs> right? Like nothing's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like- I was trying to get you involved, but it was like kind of just like. I used to think this world was so restricting and like things were like holding me back and like I couldn't do this because of that. Like when I first started playing, it just felt like it wasn't so restricting anymore. To be honest, like I think like basketball like grounded you, if, like in a weird perspective. I feel like basketball grounds you. Like I see basketball as the faith I can focus on physically, and then like when I'm a personal, like I can focus on like you know my faith spiritually off the court, and that's the cool thing about being grounded. Like that's what faith is all about. Like it's something that you can tie yourself down to, anchor yourself to, that just like brings you back whenever things get overwhelming or too hard. It's it's good to know you have stuff like that. Like. Amen, brother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amen. This is crazy. Oh this is bad. <laughs> Just, I'm like crawling because look how steep this is. Like, this is like dangerously steep. I feel like a mountain lion. And I'm so scared of heights, too. I feel like I'm going to fall. I feel like I'm like this. This is like a five minute break. Yeah. Oh, no, but then I'm just gonna freak myself out. I feel lightheaded. Same. How are you Oh, buddy. And yes. 1600. Oh, if you take a break now, it'll help us more in the end. No? Yeah. No, no, okay. Well, I feel like really lightheaded. Right I believe now. in I yourself. I got it. I'll come with you guys, yeah. This is unreal. This is a little bit unreal. I don't feel real right now. It's an SNL skit. Oh my god, it's just never ending. Oh. Nope. Toyota Make or Break on CBC is presented by Toyota.
Euh, pour un mardi, ça serait euh, ce que j'ai fait, gym euh, le matin. Après ça, je retourne chez moi, je mange. Et puis, euh, je dois partir pour mon physio. Je, je dois être là-bas un peu plus tôt pour me TP et pour euh, faire mes exercices. I, what I hate the most and I pray to God we don't do today is uh, throws. I'm kind of a big boy, uh, over 220 pounds. Falling 300 times a day uh, hurts the body, so I'm ask coach to skip that part. <laughs> My brother is also my training partner here and he's my big brother, so it's always nice to throw him around uh, from time to time when he likes me. <laughs> like he'll be in Paris with me, so he'll probably coach me. I always listen to him. He knows me better than I know myself when it comes to judo. And uh, I always listen to him and uh, I met with a lot just hearing what he tells me through the stands and uh, yeah, I wouldn't be who I am today without him. He knows me very well, so he got caught me twice. And I said I wasn't gonna get caught, but he knows me too well. Whereas him, he changes his judo every other week. So everything changes. C'est les biceps. Mais je sais pas comment c'est. Ça ici. Qu'est-ce que t'as fait, t'as déchiré son... Bah je me suis énervé. J'ai pas bien fait avec lui. J'ai pris en judo, c'est ça. ça qui arrive quand on m'énerve. Ah. Ça trop penché pour le. Ah. 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 So over the past two years, Shadi's had a, a few what we call more major type injuries. He was maybe the one that had the most major injuries. She knows the spots. <laughs> j'ai juste 25 ans, mais mon corps, j'ai le sentiment que j'ai 45 ans. Yeah, it's a lot better. How much, honest? No, it's perfect. Zero? Yeah. I haven't been able to do this in like all week. Good. J'aime, j'aime pas vivre sept mois en avance. J'aime vivre une étape à la fois. Alors mon mon objectif, c'est le Grand Chelem de Paris maintenant. I'm always this close to meddling at it, so I think uh, the third time's a charm and uh, we're gonna go get that gold. I'm, I'm launching everything, yo, the book, the wine, you know, instead of just, uh, you know, always being on the track, it's kind of like, you know, a different, a different part of me. I think right now, a lot of people are probably wondering what's my next move, and that's something that I'm still trying to figure out. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of enjoying and, and embracing the ride, and uh, we will see what happens. <laughs> I got one of those on my bar right now. Mmm, that's a bar, you hear that? That is uh, the bell. Ding. Got a sauce? Yep. Oh, that's hot, bro. Huh? It's what do you guys, what you guys, what you guys drinking over there? Can I have that one? Give me one, Yuri. Is that clean? Wow. You picked it. That's why you can only grow grapes. Yeah, yeah, I tried it. That's why in Niagara on the lake. I shot like a one-two, yeah, it's blessed. You guys all have shades on, I don't need my shades. And your mom, your mom said. Your mom damn me, stuff. You should go take those. Should have brought two. So she has one. It's bright out here. Thanks, yeah, 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 thanks, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right now, I'm a little bit in the off season. I'm just trying to enjoy the time with my family, my friends, not think about it too much. So yeah, Andre de Grasse, the athlete, you know, I always got to be ready, but Andre de Grasse, the person, yeah, I'm just like chilling, have a good time, and I'm not even thinking really much about it. Oh. Oh. Holy shit. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Probably top 10 hardest things I've ever done. A lot harder than I anticipated, even though I thought it was gonna be pretty bad. I did not think it was gonna get so steep that I'd have to crawl, but doing it with others definitely made it easier. Let's go. I've so seen the lights. <laughs> you good? No. <laughs> it's really hard to breathe. Pictures? I do not look. 
good enough question. There's no one even like near us. Thanks. You wanna just do an Abby? Yeah. Sure, I'm okay. Yeah. Okay. Hey, wait, go more this way. There's like a tree. Oh, okay. Really? There's trees? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a good one. Take a picture of me. Oh, honestly, I kind of really enjoy going through like all like yeah. when I take photos take for Instagram, like yeah, slowly going through them. Yeah. But it's the worst when they all are on your phone and then you have the airdrop it to everyone, yeah. but it's fine. I, it's fun. It's fun oh, to edit oh. them too. Okay, can we go down? I think I deserve a reward. Usually my go-to medication when I'm in competitions and I'm in pain, which is like from an injury or from my period is ibuprofen, like 400 milligrams or maybe 800 milligrams if I'm feeling like it. I can't even imagine being able to pump out six rounds in that type of pain because I don't, I just don't feel like myself because I think I'm just worrying so much about it, about like when my period is going to come in, how it's going to affect it. Because also when you go on your period, you're more prone to injury and you're weaker and you're more tired. Yeah, when she told me that I never considered it, kind of felt kind of like kind of lame about it because as a guy you're just super competitive and we don't got to deal with that part and that was like a shock to me because now I get to appreciate her more my mother more for all women in general like it's it's amazing you know because you still have to be locked in zoned in and get the job done whether you're feeling it or not right I came from Texas here but she's left Canada so many times now like I'm kind of getting used to it I feel like I'm, this is my home and she's the one that's constantly leaving because She's battling like every month, you know? So um, it's really, really special to see somebody trying to do the Olympic thing, especially in breaking. We don't have any coaches. We don't really have something like an infrastructure for it. She can travel this whole year and she can walk away with nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's like her biggest dream to make the Olympics. You know what I'm saying? So like to really, really go for it and say that out loud and be very upfront about it and blunt, it's really, really inspiring because it's a lot of people that maybe think like that, but they don't say it, you know? Not alone just say it, but actually act on it. You know, and she's constantly acting on it. Really, really proud of her and happy to see her go shine. I just want to manage my expectations and not like put like it for sure that I'm going to win Pan Am, although I know I am fully capable of doing so. But that's also why I feel like I can do this. I always tell myself like I'm my mother's daughter so I can win because like if you knew her, she was like super alpha phoenix. <laughs> My mom passed away last year. She was not as supportive because she, like, she was really, really sick. Like, she had like kidney failure, liver failure, a bunch of stuff because she was, she was an alcoholic. But it was because her life was really, 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 really stressful. I know that now. She really wanted to have grandkids, so she was like, "Yo, can you just like get a relationship and then focus on like I want to see grandkids before like." Finally texted her like, yeah, I, I don't ever want to date anybody ever again until the Olympics. Like, I just want to go to the Olympics. And she's like, okay, I fully support you. You're going to go to the Olympics. And then when you get gold, you have to say like, thanks mom and like everything. So it's like, after that, I was able to win like the nationals and I was like, got fit that world games and like all these successes, which I wish she could see. I feel like I've inherited a lot of her personality but the positive stuff, because there was obviously like addiction and like alcoholism and everything, but like, that's why I have kind of this resilience and unwavering confidence. I'm gonna make it to the Olympics until I don't, you know, like that's the mentality I'm going in with. Like, I know I'm gonna make it and it's a yes until it's like a no. <laughs> yeah, that's just like kind of my mentality. You know, everyone coming up to me and said, hey, you know, you're getting ready for Paris. And I give them the, the, the obvious answer, yeah, yeah, I'm ready, but I'm not thinking about it right now. Kind of just chill, off season, you know, just relax. You know, those are the things I'm thinking about right now, because that's, you know, it's all you can really control. Je vais être content de ma carrière, pas satisfait, mais content. Mon corps va mieux. Avec le Grand Slam de Paris, Shadi, il est vraiment en bonne forme. It was funny because the, before the hike, I was stressing a lot, I was stressing out about it a bit, like just in a joking way, just like, oh my god, I don't know if I can do this. We're uh, getting ready for U.S. Open. It's a, it's a good test for what we need to do moving forward. Non, j'avais pas perdu toute ma confiance, mais c'est sûr qu'elle était un peu endommagée. Je pense que je vais être à ma meilleure quand j'ai besoin d'être à ma meilleure, ce qui va être en mai aussi. Puis pour moi, c'est 
m'entourer de gens qui sont plus rapides que moi, <rire> puis essayer de les suivre. Vraiment, je pense que j'apprends beaucoup. Oui, c'est ça qui est la, la beauté de faire un camp combiné. The only way we have gotten where we have is because we failed time and time and time again. We can't just wait till a year from now. We gotta get that one percent better every single day. We knew that last year and the year before, and the year before with the back, we weren't reaching the potential that my body could, and now it's honestly getting to the next step which we are going to Quebec City for Easterns. 